Hello, GFA. I'm Andres Villegas, the President and CEO of your organization. We're so pleased that we had a strong crossover day this week on Tuesday. Crossover day is the day, the last day that bills have the opportunity to leave the Senate or the House and be considered further in the last uh, portion of the legislative session. We'll be wrapping up on April 4th. Uh, we only had 12 legislative days after crossover day this past Tuesday to get the rest of our legislative um, package through and all other bills, of course, that the House and Senate considers as well. Why is it so important that we have a strong uh, showing before or on crossover day? Uh, because it's really where the rubber meets the road. It's the last few days, the last few hours, the last few minutes of decisions that happen here as to whether or not our legislation and other legislation will survive. If it can, if it can pass the test of what legislators consider to be valuable, that adds value to our economy, to our society, uh, and to our communities. We're very, very fortunate that in all three bills, we had a very, very strong votes, uh, and that we have the opportunity to continue pushing hard for issues that are adding value to your assets. If you own timberland, if you own mills, if you're a consulting forester, if you're logging, if you're trucking, all of those things are essential to our businesses being successful. And what we're trying to do at GFA and here at the Capitol is add value to your assets. So thank you, to, especially to our chairman, Chad Nimmer, who came up from Blackshear, Georgia, and spent, uh, spent his day with us here at the Capitol working with legislators. We didn't finish up till about 10 p.m. on Tuesday night, but that's the type of effort that it takes, the type of engagement that it takes for all of us to be successful in the forestry community and continue pushing so that Georgia remains the number one forestry state in the nation. We had a very successful crossover day with three bills leaving the House of Representatives and heading over to the Senate. I want to tell you a little bit more about those as well as give some uh, members of the House who were very instrumental in getting those bills moving to give you their perspectives on the politics and the process of how we got those go going. House Resolution 686 passed the House of Representatives by a, a strong vote of 166 to nothing. Um, this bill, what it does is it will reduce the rate of severance tax from 100% of the value of your timber down to 40% of the value of your timber. There again, that's a fairness issue. As a farmer in this state, uh, my crops and my commodities are not taxed at sale, and so we wanted to be able to do the same thing for the forestry industry to once again make sure that Georgia stays the number one forestry state in the nation um, and continue to uh, grow and uh, move forward. Also, when we ran some of the numbers, we found out that if we did make this change, in almost every instance when the harvest was paid for and they paid that tax, what was left over if it was 40% instead of 100% was just about enough to buy the seedlings to replant. So it's just a wonderful opportunity for us to, to kind of give an incentive to individual business owners to be able to keep the business going. House Bill 997 passed the House of Representatives by a margin of 171 to nothing. The bill calls for the elimination of the ad valorem taxes on forestry equipment that's used in both harvesting and the production of timber. This includes the, the equipment that we use for site prep, equipment that's used for harvesting, as well as for planting um, and reforestation activities. So this is important because that brings our equipment in line with the rest of agriculture, who, who many times, oftentimes, does not pay any ad valorem tax on their equipment. Uh, being a farmer, a lot of my equipment is, is tax exempt. Uh, and so I wanted the same thing for the forestry industry. I know that the forestry industry has struggled, especially in the last uh, few years with COVID and inflation and increasing input costs. And so this is about fairness. Um, and uh, this equipment is, uh, is used in the woods. A lot of times no one knows it's there. Uh, so I thought that it would be a, a great uh, uh, added benefit to this industry to allow Georgia to continue to be the number one forestry state in the nation. Well, a lot of times people think when you say timber business, they think of the, the big mills. And while they're incredibly important to our industry, they are not where the numbers are of people that are involved. Because you have a lot more people growing the trees, and then you have people that are cutting and hauling the trees. And then the mill, of course, does employ people and have their owners and all. But, but the vast majority of people involved are everyday citizens, and there are a lot of them all across the state. So when we talked about fairness and the fairness being to individuals, that was what resonated, I think, with the, with the House members. I'm so proud that Georgia is the number one forestry uh, state in the nation, and I'm proud to carry House Bill 997, which I think will help our loggers and foresters by making that, the equipment used for logging exempt from ad valorem tax. House Bill 1479 passed the House of Representatives by a margin of 174 to nothing. 
The bill calls for the move of the Board of Registration, which current, is currently housed in the Secretary of State's office, over to the Georgia Forestry Commission. The Georgia Forestry Commission has all enforcement powers that it needs, as well as investigative and subject matter knowledge that it needs to be able to execute um, the Board of Registration very efficiently. Uh, we just uh, finished Legislative Day 30 here at the Capitol. Everything is, the pace is picked up and we're moving really fast. Uh, we just passed a bill on crossover this week, for House Bill 1479, uh, that deals with the uh, moving the Board of uh, Registers for Foresters from the Secretary of State over to the uh, Forestry Commission. Uh, I feel it's uh, definitely a better fit and we get better service there. So that's why we, we've uh, introduced the bill. What's important about the three major votes that we had on crossover day? Not a single legislator voted against any of our forestry bills. This points to the fact that we have very, very strong support for bipartisan support in the House for forestry legislation. That didn't happen by accident. That happens because we have members in both rural and urban Georgia, both Republicans and Democrats, who support and engage with their legislators, who understand the importance of having a relationship with their elected officials and make sure that they are representatives of forestry within their districts and within their communities. It also happened because we have a strong advocacy program and advocacy team at GFA. We've been able to bring on great talent that can work the halls of, of our state capitol, engage with legislators, build trust. And lastly, we help make sure that the folks who support forestry also have the opportunities to have strong campaigns and come back to the capitol year after year. During the off season, we're supporting their campaigns through the forest pack. So for all of you who are engaged with GFA, for all of you who engage in our legislation, for, and for all of you who are a part of our advocacy effort here at the Capitol and at home, thank you. We're gonna continue working hard to get these bills through the Senate. We have another one that, has been, uh, that is sitting in Senate rules relating to poaching as well. Uh, and hopefully we'll have four wins related to our legislation coming out of the entire process here at the Capitol in 2022. Thanks again for your support.